Natalie, I'm going to hand this over to you, right? Because I get this question, like, hey, what are some of the deductions I can get? And I can't answer this question because I'm not a tax professional, so I don't know them because I just hired someone like you because that's your specialized knowledge, and that's what you do. What's going on? This is Nasa, aka the real estate guru. I'm not your guru, I'm your guru because I actually do this business. Today I'm back again with Natalie Kalaji from Colotax.com. She can be found on Bigger Pockets. She is a tax strategist helping us with frequently asked questions that I somehow get on my Instagram, which is IG Real Estate Duru. We're going to go over the top 10 real estate investing deductions of 2019. Natalie, I'm going to hand this over to you, right? Because I get this question, like, hey, what are some of the deductions I can get? And I can't answer this question because I'm not a tax professional, so I don't know them because I just hired someone like you because that's your specialized knowledge and that's what you do. So I just want you to run through the top 10 uh, real estate investing deductions of 2019 that you, you know, see people miss. Yeah, so these are the 10 things I catch the most often where people didn't know they could get these, didn't know to deduct them. Important to mention, most of these qualify no matter what kind of investing you're doing. A lot of people think rentals don't qualify as a business for all the same deductions. They do in most cases, check with your tax pro, but these are the key ones that you wanna make sure you get on your tax return. First one, this one's kind of important, a home office. If you have a dedicated home office space, it can't be like, oh, I set up a dinner tray on my couch while I'm watching Wheel of Fortune, I'm working on my books, that doesn't count. But if you've got a room you use exclusively for business, we can take a deduction using that home office. The biggest reason that's important is for this next one, mileage. When you're a new wholesaler, how do you find your deals? You, you, drive. Drive. you drive for dollars, yeah. you get all those miles racked up. So the reason the home office is important is because normally, if you're going from your house to something business related, that's not deductible. That's commuting, same as going to work. They don't let you. Okay. So if you have an office at your home and now you're going to look at properties, you're going from work to work. Yes. So now anytime you leave your house, going to something, going to a real estate event, going to look at a rental, whatever, all those miles are included. Okay. So whenever possible, if you can, get the home office so you can ramp up your miles, track all of your mileage anytime you do anything real estate related, whether it's locally, out of state, there's Mile IQ apps, a real easy one a lot yes, of people that's use. that's what I use, Miles IQ. Yep. And uh, just keep track of them, and that racks up, it's 57, they might have raised it to 58 cents a mile for 2019, so if you drive 20,000 miles, that's 10 grand. The next one I see people miss a lot, your personal cell phone and internet. So even if you don't have a separate phone for real estate, if you're using your phone, IRS says we can take a portion of that. So normally 50 to 70% of your use we can deduct. So depending on, you know, kind of how big your business is, you know, look at a few things, but make sure you mention that at year end to your accountant. Hey, I use my phone and internet. I run my business from my smartphone. Do I get a deduction? Now let me say this about the personal cell phone and the internet. Um, believe it or not, guys, my first few years in business, I did not know that. I read a book um, pertaining to real estate taxes about three or four years ago, and the person mentioned the cell phone. At that, I want to say probably could have been three years ago. Then I started paying my phone bill with my business account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I didn't know that. And the internet thing, I started doing the same thing with my internet. I didn't know that. I got totally missed the ball on that my first few years in the business. But yep, Yeah, it's an easy one to miss. I think people think I use it personally, so it don't count, but right. you're using it for your business. Meals is a big one. I see people miss. Keep this in mind. If you go out to coffee with your agent, you're meeting with other investors at dinner, you're going to a real estate meetup, a lot of times they're at a place where you can get food, that's deductible as a business meal. So keep track of those. This is one that's pretty important that I often see people miss. So self-employed health insurance. Yes. If you don't have health insurance anywhere else, if you're married to someone and you're covered under their plan, this doesn't count. But like if you're totally single, no other way to get health insurance, you're self-employed and you're paying for your health insurance, you get a deduction for this. So keep that in mind too. If you're paying for your own health insurance, you're self-employed, you're full-time in real estate, make sure you get this deduction. Any dues and subscriptions you pay. So for me, this is stuff I think people miss because a lot of time if you're like, if you're involved with rentals, it's not directly related to your properties. It's kind of this outlier that doesn't end up on reports. So to me, this is like, if you're an agent, you pay those desk fees or you pay yeah. your annual license fees or like your bigger pocket subscription. If they yeah. pay to come to a mastermind, you do like any kind of fees you're paying that don't directly relate to a project. 
that's still deductible. So make sure you grab all those, keep track of them. Now, I do pay for my Bigger Pockets subscription out of my business, yes. And I was on episode 116 of Bigger Pockets podcast, just FYI. But yeah, that I definitely, yeah, do that one. Commissions you pay. So I think wholesalers miss this a lot or it gets booked wrong on your taxes. So like if you joint venture with someone, yeah, if that tax form gets issued to you for the full amount, but you paid another wholesaler maybe five grand because they found the buyer, you don't pay tax on that full amount and your account needs to know that because on paper it looks like you do. Yeah. So make sure that if you're paying someone else for anything to do with your deal, it gets recorded in some way. It's really easy, especially if you partner with someone, it kind of yeah. it's on the HUD, it's somewhere that you don't think about. A lot of accountants miss that. So make sure if you had to pay anyone to make that deal happen, that's a cost to you. You can deduct that. Your books and education, this is one people miss a lot. If you have an Audible account, because you listen to a bunch of eBooks, or you listen to a bunch of audio books, you buy books, you pay to go to seminars, any of those things to relate to real estate, further your education, make sure you're getting those deductions on there. I gotta start paying for my Audible account and my business account. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And your marketing and advertising, I think this is one people should know, but this is a big one and it adds up quick with with wholesaling, where do you get your deals? Most people aren't, you know, just finding them on MLS. So if you're paying for your direct mail, your cold call, your VAs, all of that. So basically anything you spent money on to try to get properties, make sure you keep track of. And then the last thing people miss, because well, people I think hate spending money on this, and it's often a year behind, is any taxes and legal fees you pay, anything you paid for professionals. And I say like taxes a year behind because like we do your taxes in April, but you get to deduct expenses when you pay them, right? So like you're paying me to do your 2018 taxes, but we're deducting it in 2020 because it was paid in 2019. Oh, so okay. it's kind of shifted around. So make sure you don't forget that because it was from a while ago. By the time you yeah. circle back around to it, it was at the very beginning of the year. But make sure you get all these deductions in there. You grab everything. The key thing to remember is if it was something that you wouldn't have paid for if you weren't doing real estate, write it down. It's always better to ask your accountant and double check than to leave stuff off because we don't have crystal balls. So make sure. If somebody hired a tax strategist Mm -hmm. and they wasn't sure um, about what they can write off, they can shoot their tax strategist an email. Yeah. And Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. Always better to check than to totally miss it. Right. That makes sense. Okay. And tell people um, where could they find you at? So the easiest place to find me is on the website, colotax.com. If you have questions, you can set up a free consultation, um, do anything like that on there. I do, um, like you said, blogs, information on there, videos, doing some webinars soon. So hop on there, get your tax information, and make sure you don't leave any money on the table in 2019. Yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, Comment, and I want you to comment of what things that you didn't know that you can write off that you now do know so comment about that below also make sure you like this uh video make sure you follow me on instagram uh real estate guru and as usual till next time i wish you much success in your life and your business peace